This is uh, JT's Physics of Cycling. Uh, <clears throat> this is the first video that I've done, but I thought I'd give it a try. Anyway, um, you know, the professional uh, cyclists um, have millions of dollars at their disposal to do all kinds of interesting testing in, in wind tunnels and etc. Um, as amateur cyclists, you know, after we buy a $2,500, $3,500 bicycle and keep ourselves and tires and tubes and stuff like that. <laughs> we can't really hire a uh, wind tunnel to uh, analyze our um, our wind drag and, and things like that. But how important is wind drag um, to a cyclist? Um, air friction and, and other kinds of friction. And there's a very simple test that we can uh, look at um, in our everyday riding scenario. So let's uh, consider a uh, cyclist um, uh, who is going to ride up a hill, and I'm a terrible artist, okay? He's going to ride up a hill, and let's say the vertical relief on this hill is um, 250 feet. So as he, uh, he or she climbs the hill, uh, we have the Earth's gravity uh, working against us. So uh, we have to do all this work to get to the top of the hill, say from uh, uh, relation zero feet uh, at the base of the hill to um, a vertical relief of 250 feet. So how much work um, does the cyclist do uh, getting from zero to the top of the hill at 250 feet? Um, it's a lot of work and um, if you want to use feet, you can, your result would be in foot-pounds. But the energy um, that the cyclist expends is not lost. It goes into what's known as potential energy. In other words, the rider is um, raising his um, state of energy. And uh, the uh, potential energy that he gains is equal to his mass times Earth's gravity uh, and then times the vertical displacement, um, in this case 250 feet. Now, what I want to uh, demonstrate how much um, energy loss that we have, I, I don't want to just consider how much energy we gain by climbing the hill. Let's now imagine that the rider uh, turns around and uh, rides right back down the hill. Let me grab an eraser. Um, so, um, the laws of physics state that once the rider gets to the top of the hill and turns around and then uh, proceeds to ride back down the hill, um, he should get all of this energy back in the form of kinetic energy. So, um, all of the energy that he stored in potential, uh, he's going to get back in some form or another uh, in kinetic. So, let's go ahead and have a look at the equation for kinetic energy. Um, so, we have um, climbing the hill, we have gained an amount of energy equal to the mass of the rider times gravity times the height of the hill. And then that is equivalent because of the law of conservation of energy in physics uh, to one half times the mass times the velocity squared. Um, so if a rider expends this amount of energy, what, um, and then climbing a hill and then turns around and rides back down, he should get all that energy back in the form of his velocity at the bottom of the hill. So, um, given that uh, H is uh, 250 feet and G is Earth's gravity, or 32, roughly 32 feet per second squared on Earth, um, then we can go ahead and, and set up this equation to be uh, the rider's mass times 32 uh, feet per second squared times 250 feet was the relief of the hill. And that's going to be equal to one half times the rider's mass times the velocity squared. Now, the reason I didn't specify a mass, um, you know, say 200 pounds or whatever, is that we have an m 
on both sides of the equation and they just simply cancel out. So we're left with 32, and I'm going to go ahead and drop the units, I'll put them on at the end, uh, times 250, and that's equal to 1 half, and then the m is gone there, d squared. So um, what I want to do is, um, based on the fact that our model rider just climbed uh, the hill, uh, 32 times 250 is equal to 1 half uh, d squared. Um, he should be able to turn around and get all of his energy back in the form of velocity um, and friction. So how much friction is lost? I mean, how much energy is lost due to friction? Um, let's go ahead and solve this for V. So we'll go ahead and multiply both sides times 2. So over here I'll get 2 times 32 times 250. And this is equal to V squared. And then going ahead to solve this for V, let's take the square root of both sides. So I get V on this side, and I get the square root of 2 times 32 times 250. So what is that? <clears throat> I don't know, but I can find out here. So I'm going to turn this on. 2 times 32 is, of course, 64 times uh, 250, the height of the hill. So that's 16,000 on that side. And then let's go ahead and take the square root. Uh, I can't worry, answer. Uh, so um, the velocity then is 126.5, and that is in feet per second. Okay. So that is the speed at which um, the rider, with no loss of energy to friction, should reach uh, based on a climbing a hill that's 250 feet high. But let's um, put that in terms of um, in, in terms that, that uh, we're more familiar with, 126.5 feet per second times 3,600 seconds per hour. Um, and then divide that by 5,280 feet per mile. And these units ought to work out here to give us miles per hour. So let's find out what that is. 126.5 times 3,600, um, and that's divided by 5,200 and 5,280 feet in a mile. So this is saying that we should be reaching a speed of 86 miles per hour with no energy loss due to friction. Um, and I think that I've never actually heard of somebody hitting 86 miles an hour, especially down a little hill that's only 250 feet high. Um, typically, I'll reach from 40 to 47 or 48 miles an hour, which is, um, you know, roughly half of this 86 miles an hour that I should be getting back. Um, so you can see that the um, energy loss due to uh, resistance, in this case uh, mainly air resistance, is significant. Um, in fact, the faster you go, let's say, with an increase in speed, um, will translate into an increase in uh, the force of friction acting on you. So the faster you go, the greater the frictional force. So we will reach a terminal velocity, just like skydivers do, flowing through a viscous um, media, in this case air. But you can see, you know, you don't need a wind tunnel to show you uh, that you're losing a lot of energy. In fact, you probably didn't even need me to um, do this math in physics um, to understand what you already know as a writer. And that is headwind, tailwind, uh, your speed uh, through air uh, makes a big, big uh, difference uh, and impact on your, on, your, uh, on your speed. Anyway, there you go. That's uh, JT's Physics of Cycling. 
lesson, I guess, uh, lesson video number one. Thank y'all.